Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Astroneer with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to the Tundra Planet, one of the planets I originally wasn't going to use for our final base, but somehow has ended up winning my heart. And when I say somehow, I mean because the other two planets were glitchy as hell. They were really, really bad. On the arid planet, upon landing on the planet, the habitat in my spaceship automatically activated, and then... When I tried to move off of the planet, it caused the game to crash. When I've came back to the game, the habitat is still attached to my spaceship, now permanently, and is still technically attached to the arid planet by a series of pipes, which only went invisible after leaving the planet. I will try to get some footage of that, and if I have any spare, I will show you now. Or if it all completely got lost, then I'm afraid we're just carrying on. Either way, though, we are now here on the Tundra Planet, which is actually a lot more flat than originally thought. There are certainly loads of locations of very steep mountains, but the rest of it is actually exactly what I wanted. So although the glitches were kind of forced upon me, it's actually turned out for the best. So this will be our final little home. So, of course, let's set down this, put our solar panel here, and then, if that's flat enough, these two should be flat next to each other. One for you, then one for you, and then I'll grab the rest of the resin from the landing bay. Which, of course, is the spaceship, which is over there, all glitchily in a section of rock, because, of course, it is. Let's just build that before we go. There we are. All nice and flat and pretty. There we go. We have the fuel condenser and we have the trade post, which of course means we need some power. Now, since the sun's not out, let's use what's left of the battery. And we do actually have the wind vane currently working. By the looks of things, this is a very, very windy planet. So what we should do is make a 3D printer fairly soon, and then put down some of the larger wind vanes. Maybe we can make a wind farm along this ridge. Now I've said that, that's exactly what I would like to do. So, if this over here is resin, which I think it might be... It's been a while since I've seen resin on the surface, since I've been on that other planet. Nope, that is hydrazine. Then that's hydrazine as well. Well, in that case, I'll have to make some fuel, and I'll get myself some resin, then we can move that all the way along there and make a ridge of the wind turbines. And then we can start fortifying this location to make it a bit more safe from the storms, which are definitely on this planet. So I'll be back in just a second when, when I finish doing all the stuff you've seen a million times before. The Tundra Planet seems to have these large rock formations just like the radiated one, so we do have to be a bit careful in terms of going for certain resources until we have the drill. And now we have all of this lovely line over there, once we've made the 3D printer we can add all of those wind turbines, and the 3D printer will go... I guess I can't put it over here, unless I use this of course. Yeah, okay, 3D printer will go next to the smelter to make things easier on myself. Although apparently I do need some more resin. So, some more hydrazine in there. Let's get myself some resin. Let's put down the 3D printer. No, first of all, the smelter. That way we can get the cheaper stuff. Then we'll put down the 3D printer. Then we'll start making the wind turbines. Then we can get everything else set up, including eventually the wall, which will protect us from the incoming storms. So far, the wind has only came from this direction, but if the radiated planet was anything to go by, that can swap over time, so let's just keep an eye on that. And here's some organic to fuel that. Did that actually stop the wind turbine, because it was in the way? If so, let's just put this here for now, then. Really? That's not spinning? Uh, the wind has died down a little bit, but you'd think that would be okay to spin. How bizarre. We 
weird. The 3D printer is up, and we have made two wind turbines, which only now have stopped spinning. A little bit annoying, perhaps if I put them up on the very top over there, in which there's no blockage from any direction, maybe that would be a bit more reliable as soon as we get enough resin to move all the way up, and then all of these connection points can be converted into battery sections. Although right now I am hearing some wind, so I think there's a storm coming. And I need some more resin so that we can make a second fuel condenser, so that we can increase the speed of us making fuel. Come on, there we go, make the resin and let's go and hide out in our habitat. Wow, just in time. Just leave the door open, that's fine. I'm sure you won't be hurt in any way. Thankfully, whilst we're in the habitat, we can still use all of our buildings. Well, thankfully, due to that storm, both of the wind turbines are going crazy, so now both of our fuel condensers are getting all the power they need. Come on, give me that. So the next thing I want is some lithium, and then that way we can have some more batteries, and so we can store for the rest of the day. I may actually make a couple more solar panels first. They're definitely working out pretty well. Also, look how flat all of this is! Isn't it lovely in comparison to the last world? Um, so the solar panels, I believe, used compound. If I make that, I can make three of them. Sure. I'll be taking both for you. All of the fuel. Fantastic. We now have two batteries, three solar panels, and two wind turbines. So right now, I think for the time being, our power shortage is completely fixed. And so, the next thing I would like to quickly grab is some more resin so that we can build our vehicle bay. Because of course, what we want to do in this episode is find the giant solar panel, which should be located somewhere on this world. So far, there has been one on every world I've been to, including the arid one, because I saw it before all the horrible glitches happened. So it's on the radiated, it's on the terror, and it's on the arid. I can only assume it's on the tundra as well. And even if not, I, of course, still want the vehicle bay, because I would like to do some exploring of the world. Now, I can't quite remember what we need for the vehicle bay, but either way, we're going to build it over here, so that we can flatten this land and have a nice runway for the vehicle itself. So, I'll be taking that resin, thank you very much. Why did that go so low for? That's very annoying. Perhaps I should have raised this land a little bit, perhaps that would have made it a bit more likely to go upwards, it certainly makes sense. And what I need is some aluminum. Do I have any spare from earlier? No, I do not. Okay, in that case, could you please trade some fuel for some of that lovely stuff? Thankfully, fuel is apparently always in high demand in space. Even if we can make it out of any source of power ever. Maybe we're the only ones who know of this technology. We're leaps and bounds above our species. Even though we look human, maybe we're not. I'm getting a lot faster at this whole base building thing. So we have pretty much everything up except for a research base because there's not all that much need to have the research base anymore. And now we have the winch. So will this go onto the back of the truck? Well, first, apparently we need to build the seat. I would prefer the, th the three seat. The three seat definitely looks better. But the one seat is far cheaper. Okay, for once we'll go with the smart option. Although the one seat faces that way? I thought that was just wrong, like it's done in the past. There we go! That, that was going to be so weird if that wasn't the case. And that really goes there. So how do you use the winch exactly? 
Okay then. Well, that is really, really freaking weird, but still, we now have our little thing sorted. We could add the crane and make this a kind of general purpose one for mining the rarer material because we don't really need all that much storage now. We're not going to go out to get resource because we have all of this power and, of course, our trading section. We don't really need it, so sure. Let's go ahead and build ourselves a crane. I think I'm going to need one more copper for that, which I am. And then we're going to go out and try to find the huge solar panel, if there is indeed one on this planet. And don't worry, I won't record the entire journey. Instead, just when we find something interesting. So, I'll be right back once we've got our crane attached. We've got a drill attached to that, and we're off on our adventure. Here we go, I've decided to make a rover in which I've attached the winch to. So this way, we have a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to sorting all this stuff out, and it actually looks like the winch is facing in the correct direction. Because before this, we were sort of facing forwards with the winch, even though that's where we're going to move, obviously. So now our adventure begins. We just got two and a half titanium, and if we find anything else of interest, we will of course stop and explore it. But for the most part, so far, everything is looking very, very similar. Ooh, hello. That isn't the panel straight away, is it? Because that would be far too lucky. It might be. Is that the solar... No, that's not the solar panel, is it? Hmm. Is there an attachment point? There is. I think this actually might be the solar panel. Let's find out. Let's move our solar panel off. And let's see if we can attach the rover to it. And see if it will give us energy. Okay, we can attach. Yep, that does give us energy, so that is the solar panel. Well, that wasn't much of a journey at all, was it? We will explore more of the planet before we go, since I'm planning this to be the final episode before any major updates hit the game. Oh, is there a storm coming? I can hear the wind effects. So how does this work then? So clearly, the first thing we need to do is dig this out of the dirt, because right now, it's completely wedged in there, and it's way bigger than I thought it was going to be. And let's actually attach the solar panel back, shall we? So we can feed off that as we do this. Thank you. Okay, it's no longer wedged. So, do we just do this? Does it go to an attachment? Aha! Yep, we definitely grabbed it. Oh, this does not look like it's going to work out well. Come on, solar. Come with me. Yes! <laughs> we have it! This in no way is glitchy. In no way is this going to cause any problems on the way home. Poor Rover. Come on, Rover, you can do it. It doesn't matter if you slide on your side. Oh, no, the wind just broke, apparently. Let's get back, so... It does matter if the rover ends up on its side, apparently. I mean, that makes sense. Got ya. Yeah, come in with me. You're gonna be like the ultimate source of power. But after this, the main thing we're going to need is just more batteries to hold all that power. I have no idea how this connects, though. Does it just connect to a two-part connection? Or does it have to connect to the truck or the rover and then to our buildings? And also, we're going slightly the wrong way now. This is so awkward, and I'm so glad it was close to the base. Uh, 
Okay. There we go. Stop. Now, of course, I can't actually move it, can I? Only the winch can. This is going to be really, really awkward, and I think it's upside down. On top of that, I'm guessing it might work that way round. Let's detach all of the power sources for now, just so we can test if it's actually going to work. All of these go bye-bye, including the batteries, just for now. This is weird. Okay, the winch let go. Thank you. No, no, not the actual... Hmm. Well, I guess this is a way to control it. Sure. Yes! Like that. That's fine, that's fine. A bit out of the way, though, actually. Like that, but elsewhere. Can I... I can't, no, I can't move it at all. Only the winch. Oh, that's so sad as well, because now we're going to have to attach everything up. Of course, what I really want to do is just attach the rover. I don't really want to bother with the truck. So let's deattach the rover and the truck for now. If I can, that would be great. It's so awkward getting the exact position. There we are. Then, we're going to go off and hide in our habitat, and then I'm going to try and sort out all this mess. This thing, this abomination, is the hardest thing to work with in the entire game. If you touch this in the wrong place, if you build too close to it, or if you do anything which apparently is incorrect, it will go flying off into the sunset, or it will glitch into the ground, or just all sorts of bad things. In addition to this, no, of course you can't just connect it to the main power line, because that would be far too easy for something as majestic and amazing as the giant solar panel. Either way though, the solar panel is now connected, the rover is a permanent addition to this fake crash site I've made, and I'm going to start building a small underground battery section, because I think that will be cool. So there we are, our new mega power supply, we have the big solar panel now attached to everything else. So yay for that, let's put our batteries back, let's put back everything else I removed just to make sure it was giving us power, and for the brief, brief time it was day, it did give us a lot of power. It powered both of these at least three times in a row, even just on its own, essentially. So it's definitely more powerful than just a regular solar panel, which you would expect, considering it's like maybe 10, 15 times the size of the darn thing, if not more. Also, the winch is just as bad. This thing glitches out everything. Wow, that was like 30 minutes of my life just to prop it upwards towards the sun and put everything together. I'm actually a little bit fed up now, so <laughs> let's get back to building our base, our final home. And pretty much the last thing we'll do until there's some major updates to the game, because right now there's nothing left for me to do. We've unlocked all the research, we've explored every single planet type at least a little bit, well, I have off camera. I also looked at the moon, it was very boring, it was the moon, you could jump really far, it was kind of cool. And yeah, so what we need to do is build some walling then, so let's build the first wall between there and there. So we are protected at least from this side. No, wrong way. There we are. And actually, if we can make some tethers first, that would be fantastic. So let's go ahead and grab some compound. Compound, please. That way we can always be attached whilst we're building, which would make life a lot easier on myself. All the way to there. And of course, we'll smooth it out afterwards using the smoothing tool, which I believe is control click. Yes, it is. Excellent. Which, by the way, is also a very difficult tool to use. It's more of a copy and paste, honestly, than a regular smooth tool. Well, it does act like you'd expect a smooth tool to act, but because the mouse movement is different while you're using it, it's very difficult to get used to, which I think sums up a lot of the stuff in this game in terms of controls. But again, pre-alpha is pre-alpha. How tall will this have to be? It won't have to be too big, and thankfully there's not much we have to really flatten out. 
Either way, though, the wall should be here. So this is the final wall, and this will go over here. We'll add some more space up here for this type of stuff. We can actually extend that up there if we would like somewhere better for our wind turbines, because obviously being in this walled-off section, not the best for the breeze. And then we'll have an exit like here. Actually, yeah, that'll be the best idea. We'll have an exit where this is here, and that will be the only way in and out, and of course that will be where the vehicle bay is, so if we ever make any more trucks and such, they can actually get out. Like there. Then the wall continues here, all the way along to this section again, because of course I'm lazy, and this means I don't have to build a wall absolutely everywhere, because we have some pre-made sections. So I'll be right back once the wall is looking a little bit more substantial. It's daytime, and the solar panel has been feeding us all the power we could possibly need, and so, the wall is almost done. I've also decided to build it a little bit like this, almost like it's a crash site. So it's all kind of coming in, like we've landed here, exploded, and it's hollowed out a little bit further at the bottom than it has at the top. And it's almost finished. I'm not going to build it all the way up like an actual roof, although I could. I could make it a cave. Oh, I could make it a cave and then have it completely lit via the power of tethers. You see, now I've said that, that's kind of cool, but I think if I ever do that, I may as well just start off underground. Maybe. I'm not too sure. Either way, the basic idea then is this is the safe location with our smelter, our two fuel condensers, our trading post, and the 3D printer. Out here, then, is the vehicle compartment in which we can exit and enter our compound. So if there's ever a storm, the rocks will have to go through here and then around the corner to actually hurt me. And yes, I did just kind of half burp whilst talking. It sounded really weird. Three storms, a lot of tethering, and a lot of rebuilding later, and now we have completed our walling section, which means we are indeed safe inside. I have been battered by three different storms, and only a couple of rocks managed to make their way in, and it was fairly obvious where they were coming from because they were bouncing up the side sections here, so what I really need to do is go outside and make that a little bit safer. What I could do is actually build a bit of a trench around the wall, then that way any rocks that are coming towards us will get stuck in this little moat, this little trench, this little hole around the wall. So I think I will do that, but I will do that off camera for now. I think we are done with the game. We have the solar panel, we have a permanent base, we have everything we could want in terms of power, in terms of safety, we have researched every last item, and I have done some exploration on every single planet, even if there's no footage of the Arid or the Moon. The Moon is quite boring, except for the jumps, which are awesome, and the Arid is quite pretty. There's lots of yellows, lots of reds, and a fair bit of brown. There's also a little bit of grey. There's also giant spiky balls, which try to kill you. So perhaps the next time we go on an adventure, we will go over to the Arid planet just to say hello. So this will be the first episode I quit and actually look up stuff about the game. I've also been very selective in what comments I've been allowed to see by a friend of mine who's been reading all the comments first, and then any which is deemed not completely spoilerific was then given to me. So I have been reading like 95% of comments, but the few comments didn't get through. After this episode, I'll be reading every single comment, I'll be looking up all the stuff about the game, and if there's anything I have neglected to do, anything in which I really want to do, there will be one more episode. But if that's not the case, which I feel may be, this is a last episode until there's a major content update, in which, of course, I will be making a video as soon as possible. I am looking forward to seeing where this game goes in the future. But for now, it's kind of sad to say, but we are done. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, enjoyed the season, and enjoy Astroneer as a whole, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Astroneer is a series you would like to see continued in the future when there is more to cover. Thank you so much for watching.
and goodbye.